There's a big reason climate change differs from so many other public policy challenges. Unlike other crises, addressing the planet's major environmental crisis truly requires actual mass consensus. Because fixing the problem involves so many different societal changes, reducing carbon emissions, conserving energy, retrofitting infrastructure, altering our meat-centric diet, we all need to at least agree on the basic fact that we're facing an emergency. This is especially the case in a nation where, thanks to the Senate filibuster, lawmakers representing just 11 percent of the whole population can kill almost any national legislation. That's why, as encouraging as it is to see a new Associated Press poll showing that four in five Americans now see climate change as a serious problem, it's also not so encouraging to see that after the hottest year on record, one in five Americans still somehow do not acknowledge the crisis. Unfortunately, that one in five, 20 percent, may be enough to prevent us from getting to the all-hands-on-deck attitude necessary to halt a planetary disaster. So what can be done? Well, short of eliminating the filibuster, America could use a serious public education campaign. Now, the good news is that with education, many of those who don't yet believe climate change is a serious problem, they can be reached. That's the conclusion of a new study by researchers at George Mason University and Yale University finding that many voters are likely to be influenced by their personal experience of severe weather. Basically, people who have made up their mind have already made up their mind. But for those in the mushy middle, people who haven't made up their mind, personally facing severe weather and then being exposed to facts about what that weather really represents, that can make a serious difference. Now, the bad news. The bad news is that this group of undecideds probably can't be reached by the real experts. One in three of those surveyed in that same AP poll say they simply do not trust scientists. That leaves local television weather forecasters, many of whom are not actual scientists, national news outlets, and Washington political leaders to the task. And up to this point, many of them have played the opposite of a constructive role in climate education. Some examples, for instance, when it comes to weather forecasters, a recent Rolling Stone magazine assessment of the local news scene found that, quote, there's a shockingly high chance that your friendly TV weatherman is a full-blown climate denier. The report cited a 2010 survey finding only half of all local weather forecasters believe climate change is even happening, and fewer than a third acknowledge the evidence proving that it's caused by human activities. That means their forecasts often omit any discussion of climate change's effect on the weather systems that people are facing. Similarly, various media watchdog groups have reported a serious decline in news coverage of climate change, and the presidential campaign, of course, completely ignored the entire issue. In a nation that makes up just 5% of the world's total population but emits 18% of its carbon emissions, this is not acceptable. If the first step towards solving a problem is getting past the denial stage, then it's long past time for news organizations and political leaders to end their climate change denialism. Only then can we even hope to reach the consensus on which our survival depends.